Okay everyone, welcome to this video. In this video we're going to be looking at um, water sculpture. So actually capturing some water being thrown through the sky um, and stopping the action as such. So obviously I'm working in the studio. This is something you can do in your own if you set it up correctly. And obviously you've got to think about you're throwing water around. Um, so obviously you need to protect things, you're going to need some sheeting, plastic sheeting around and obviously make sure you're well away from any electrics that could get affected by your throwing water. So that's the important thing. And we're just going to have a look at the setup first of all. So, on the table, what we've got here, you can see this, I've got, I've got this here uh, with, a, with a piece of glass on there. And what I'm using that for is just to get my focus because that's roughly where I'm going to be throwing the water. So I'm going to be standing here and you see I've got a bit of a line going on there. I've got that pole that's positioned over here uh, holding the plastic. So we've got plastic being held up there and that is chamfered down and it's being caught into that basin there where we're going to be throwing the water. Obviously there's going to be a little bit going on here as well so I've got a tray there basically to catch water and uh, we're going to have to mop up now and then. But really and truthfully I don't think water is going to spread anywhere else. We've got the setup there to make sure that it's going to capture the water in this area and it's not going to cause any problem with electrics or anything like that. So that's, that's the important thing, setting up first of all. We are shooting against the white wall. So we've got a white wall background and we're lighting that up with a studio light there. You could use flash. Um, we'll talk about that a bit later. But if you've got studio lights, they are ideal for what we're doing because we want to be trying to capture the motion. Okay, so that one is lighting up the background. And then over here, we've got an umbrella set up and another studio light here and again you could use flash and again we'll talk about that a bit later so the idea is we stand here and I'm going to get some water and I'm going to be throwing the water and as I throw the water I'm going to be taking a shot remotely because I'm working on my own uh, I'm going to be taking a shot, so I'm going to have a remote shutter release on the camera. Obviously, if you're doing this, best to have two people doing it and working with somebody else. Uh, it's much easier. But we're just going to use uh, a rough guide to be able to take the shot. So what we've done, we've used, I've positioned this. This could be anything. If you just get a, a brick and put a, a glass on there or anything just to focus on, you want to get the focus. So what we do is we pre-focus on that. So on the camera... And you wouldn't probably use live view for this unless you've got a unless you've got a mirrorless camera. So we we'll just turn the camera on. We'll turn the live view on. So you can see that I'm focused. So I set my focus up. And what I do is I put it in automatic focus. So let me just change the lens. There's a little switch on the lens that allows me to do that. And I'm focusing and you can hear it. Now focus on that. Now the most important thing is at that point, once you've got the focus, is on your lens or on your camera, depending on, on the make that you've got, you need to be able to switch from automatic focus to manual focus. And what that'll do is it will lock the camera which isn't going to move because it's on a tripod, so that's important as well, you need to be on a tripod. It's going to lock it to that position where we want it to be in focus. Because when we throw the water from here, and we throw the water, I'm going to be aiming for that pole. So you can see from here, I've got that lined up with the pole. And then I've got the distance from the camera, so roughly that is going to be okay. And also that means I've got to use the right aperture because if I use a shallow aperture, a wide aperture like f4 or something like that, I'm going to have to hit that focus bang on and obviously me throwing water, 
you're not going to do that. It's, it's going to be quite difficult. So what we do is we use an aperture of about f16. So I'm shooting at f16 and hopefully the distance from the camera to there is important. You also want, don't want to try and zoom in too close to this. You want, you want a room, so you want a, a lens that will give you space because obviously when you throw that and you're trying to capture it, if you've only got a small area, like if you're using a macro, you know, really tight macro lens and you're really close to it, you're not going to capture the, the water falling into this area. Yeah, so you need to make sure that you, your camera is zoomed out or move your camera back so that you've got more, more of the view and then we can crop if we need to, to to get the water out of there. So the whole idea is capturing the water flying through the air and giving a nice shape and and you know and capturing that in the camera so we've got that now so we're going to be using uh, we're going to be using the flash like I say these flashlights now obviously these are studio lights now the advantage of that is they've simply got more power than a normal flash and you can use flash but you have to get the flash really close and it can be more difficult uh, the reason for that is to capture the motion you need what's called a flash sync mode um, or a high, high mode uh, of synchronizing the actual light and how much light it gives out. And to get the fastest speed from the light, so the shortest duration of light, because it's not the camera that actually, it's not the shutter speed that actually captures the image. It's the duration of the amount of light that the flash gives out. So therefore, we want the lights to be really low powered and that will enable us to capture and freeze the motion. If the flash is on full power, then you're not going to capture the motion. There's going to be a little bit of movement or a tiny bit. Depends on, the, on how fast your flash is, but at the full power, you're highly unlikely to, to really freeze the motion. If you take the power down low, so that means getting the lights closer, maybe putting the ISO up on your camera. So um, on my ISO, I'm shooting the 320 ISO, so about 400 will probably be better because that means you haven't got to turn the flashes up so much to capture the light that's available. Okay, but we'll talk all about that at a later stage. Okay, so I would have my tripod set there and my camera. I've took that away because I'm, I'm just going to simulate what I actually do because uh, I'm using the camera now for the video. So what I've got around my neck, although I'll be actually pressing this, I'll be cheating and pressing something else. Um, that is a remote button so I can simply communicate with the camera and I can press that and take a shot. So when I'm throwing the water, I can press this because uh, obviously I can't reach the camera from there. It does help if you've got two people. Um, having said that, sometimes you get the timing better when you throw in the water yourself. Uh, so it's, you know, but what you shouldn't do is look for the viewfinder on the camera. Always just get on your camera and hold the button and watch. So you're not looking for your viewfinder at all. You're just standing up, looking over your camera and watching. And that way you'll get the timing much better. If you work with someone else, count to three, get them to throw, then you're gonna miss loads, I do. <laughs> you know, you're gonna miss loads, but you're gonna get some really good ones. There's lots of different ways you can use this. You can use infrared triggers and all that type of thing, but it's more money. This is quite a cheap setup really, although we've got the studio lights and obviously we're working in a studio. You don't need all that, you can use flash. It's a little bit trickier with flash because they're not so highly powered. But you can, you can do it, um, but you need to get the lights much closer. So you know, you could have a flash here with an umbrella on and you can get it really close because the flash needs to be in manual and it needs to be on really low power to capture the action. And to be honest, it is achievable, I've, I've done it before using flash, so just have a go. Get your flash on a stand, obviously you need your trigger, so you can get to cheap triggers, let me just run over here. Okay, oh, and he drops it. It still works. So you can get one of these. So a camera flash trigger. That's a newer one, about sixteen pound. 
work the way you work these is this part and also useful on this model as well it's got a little attachment so when you put it on a stand you can actually fit an umbrella in there just like I've got over there you can fit an umbrella on this so when it's on a stand and your flash sits on top of there so ideal that uh, that's a new one there quite cheap I so they're about 16 pound and then you've got this part and that fits onto your camera it has a little cable that comes with it I haven't got it on at the moment because it's on my camera but the cable comes out and plugs into the side of your camera you, you'll see a little uh, remote plug so you have to get the right plug to fit your camera that's important as well and that will then control your flash by using this so that sits on top of the camera that attaches to your flash you can have that on a stand you can get a cheap umbrella they're about nine pounds something like that stuck in there and basically you've got the same as that and it is achievable you do need to get a little bit closer you could even have your flash in the background probably and fire directly at the umbrella that's worth a try that may work so lots of different ways and a much cheaper well I say much cheaper it's cheaper if you got you've already got the flashes uh, so obviously you may want two if you want to light the background up but you can do it without you can do it without just the light from the back will capture it okay so that's if you've got flash now you could use multi flashes and then you could use three or four all on low power to get the amount of light but when you consider that and the cost and you can get one of these studio lights and this is quite a good one that costs about just over hundred pound that's probably cheaper than buying four flashes you know so really you know if you're going to do things like this and you enjoy it and you've got the money Sometimes buying a studio light and a stand and a cheaper umbrella will give you a lot more options. And then later on, when you become more skilled in its use, think about purchasing another one. And then you've got the two, and you can combine the two and do lots of things. This is just using two studio lights. So let's just state the cost of that, say £200 for the lamps. Uh, which I know isn't cheap, but it's not also overly expensive if you get some you know if you bought four flashes it's going to cost you probably more than that so it's uh, something to think about if you're keen on photography or you may already have some so there you go okay so that's about that let's get more onto the to actually taking the shot chuck that away okay so <coughs> the technique I've now run out of water almost I'm having to tip this in but basically I've got a jug of water and I've also got a little dish like this now I find this better to use a small shallow dish like this it could even be one of those uh, plastic lids that fit on anything you know but not too deep quite shallow and wide and you'll find you'll get much better results using something like that so that's a little petri dish using something like that rather than a cup which is a, a little bit more awkward to you know you get more volume of water coming that's that's barely channeled something shallow like this the water separates a little bit more and you'll get better results but try try different containers for throwing the water you will get different results sometimes you might get better so it's it's worth experimenting with that you'll also notice that the shots are off taken. We're, now we're shooting on a white background. If you've got a white background and you've got white walls, which I have all the way around here, but you'll get a problem. White ceiling, white walls. If you take a shot of water flying through the air, because you've got white walls and everything, that water is that transparent, you get no contrast in the water. So not dark areas in the water. If you look at the photos I've taken, I've got dark areas in it. And that is really important. If, especially if you light up the background too much. So you want a bit of light in the background, 
but you want it slightly grey, so you don't put too much power on the background when you're using your light. And all for this reason, you will make the water look transparent. However, I've got a white studio, I've got white ceilings, white walls, but I'm blocking the light out, that's also important. I'm using a black blind right across the window. The lower the light, the ambient light you've got in the room, the better. Now I've left the lights on while I've been doing it and I've achieved it okay, but if you down the lights even more, you won't need so much flash power and you will get a better motion shot, you will freeze the motion much easier. It's really important if you're using a flash. Cut out all the ambient light, turn the lights off, well, and just use a, a small light so you can see what you're doing. Obviously you can't work in the dark because you're throwing water around, the last thing you want to do. You want a little light, a little LED light at the back just to, to throw the water, that will help. So a dark room will really help you. Uh, and also you can take up the ISO a little bit to, to help you get less power from the flash because if you take the ISO up and you've darkened the room then you'll be fine and it will mean that you won't need so much power off the, the lights, whatever type of lights that you're using to capture the shot. Now, what I was saying about it being transparent, if you have got white walls and white ceilings and whatever, it's important, you'll notice that I've got black bin liners over here. And I've blocked out the light with black curtains, so I've got a whole lot of black over here. I've got little black clips around on there. That will help. And what that will do is, the water, when it's flying through the air, it acts like a little lens. In other words, it refracts all the colours that are around it. It soaks in those colours, it reflects. So what it's doing is, when it's flying through the air, it's picking up this black background there, this black bin liner that I've got on there, it's picking up the fact that I've got uh, black going across the ceiling there, a bit of colour on the lights there, it's reflecting that. Just like a lens would, or if you've got a glass ball, or, a, or a, uh, just a glass, you know, if you've got a normal wine glass or something like that, it sucks in all the colours. So, if you do that, what you will then get is more defined lines and more texture in your water. If everything's white, you won't get that. You'll, you'll just be that transparent, you can't see any texture in it. So, really important is. Introduce some black. You could even on the floor put down some um, a, a black cloth or something like that. Have I got a black cloth about? Probably, I've got everything about. Okay, so putting something like that on the floor, you know, probably behind it because that's where it's going to pick the light up mainly because the light's coming from this side. So it will pick up dark areas. You can even hang this at the side and that will give you better texture in your water. So that, that's really important. So, camera settings. F16 or F18. I've used both on the shots that I've taken. So I started off at F18 then went up to F8. Uh, sorry, started off at F16 then I went up to F18. We're working in manual mode. We're working with flash. So therefore, to work with a flash, you want to get the, the sync right on the shutter speed. The shutter speed will be one two fifth of a second, and that will just help you communicate with all the different cameras and all the different flashes. It's more or less a standard setting. Now, you're saying one two fifth of a second, that's not going to stop the motion, and that's true. It doesn't. But remember what we do. The way we set the camera up, once we've got all our settings, so we're going to be We've darkened the room, we've hardly got any light. When we're shooting at the ISO, whatever we need, I think I shot at about uh, 300 to 400 ISO. I was shooting at F16 and F18. And my shutter speed at 1 25th of a second. And what that would mean is if I didn't turn the flash on and I'll take a photo, everything would be black. And that's what you need to do first of all. Make sure that no ambient light in the room is interfering. And I actually left the LED lights on on the ceiling and I've got a little bit of light coming through the door. I haven't blacked out the entire room. Uh, and it worked fine. So, you know, you may, 
you can judge the ambient light by taking a photo without the flash on. If it's black, that's fine. It doesn't matter what's going on inside the room. It's not picking up the ambient light. The only light it will pick up then is the light that you introduce using the flash. And it's the amount of flash that gives you the shutter speed. So it's nothing to do with your camera. These flashes, when they're on the lowest mode, and these aren't high sync flashes, they're just normal flashes, but because I'm using them at a low power, and they're quite powerful, what they'll do is they'll give me a shutter speed of about two thousandths of a second, or in some cases more. With the high quality flashes, you can get probably ten thousandths of a second is possible. So it depends on the equipment that you've got. Now, for me throwing a bit of water, although it's reasonably fast, it's not like a bullet going through the air. So around the speeds we can achieve by turning these down, or a flash, if you put the ISO up a little bit and you still get that dark picture, really usable, you can use a flash to get the same effect. Well that's how you check. Dark image, great, turn the flashes on, and then turn one light on. So I turn this one on first, I start it up on the lowest setting, and I just kept turning it up until I got the light how I wanted it on the background. Now, you don't want it too powerful. You don't want it to be pure white, because if it's pure white, again, you get that transparency coming into your water, you get less texture. So, by turning down the light a little bit, you want it fairly bright, but by turning down a little bit, and making sure that it's got a little bit of grey in there, because if you, turn, if you want to power the wall, it's going to be grey, it's not going to be white. And also this light's going to come into play after which will also throw a little bit of light on the wall because we've got the umbrella on, it's going to spread the light around. So that will put a bit of extra power on there. So we don't need too much power on this. And that's important as well because we don't want high power. <coughs> and it will mean that this light will also be on quite a lot of power. And we just, we've got the settings on the camera, all we need to do then is adjust these lights. Working in manual mode, if you're using a flash, put it into manual mode and you can turn them up or down. And that's all you have to do. Start off with one light, turn it up or down to the setting that you want to achieve the shot that you want. You don't alter your camera, no need. You've got the settings that you need. ISO 300 or thereabouts 400. Um, You've got your f-stop, so I used f16 and f18, you can experiment a little bit with that, so just up one down. And that's really to get the focus. So if you're missing the focus a little bit, it might be better to stop down a little bit f18 and just see what the light's like and see if you can use that. So f16 and f18 is, is fine. And the duration of the light, because they're so low, that is the shutter speed. So we're probably talking about one two thousandth of a second using these lights or a little bit more so that stops the action and what we do is we get the water in our little jug and we get in my case you may be working with somebody else but in my case I get my remote that will trigger the camera and I get ready just uh, check the flash is working and I throw the water press the trigger and remember of the focus is going to be roughly right because I've used this before, it's far off now, but I use this to focus on and that gives me a guide because I'm focusing on that on the height. Now you can use anything for this, you can just use books and just so you can get the focus and you can take it away. But remember that that's going to be about the height that I want. I've also lined up the shot from this way as you saw earlier. So I've got a line, I'm throwing it at that pole over there and I'll throw the water. So, all I do, I'm not even going to bother looking at the shot. What I tend to do is I just keep throwing the water, I'll get ready, so the camera's ready, and I'll throw, and I'll take the shot. And I do that 20, 30 times, doesn't matter. And then I'll look through my photos and see what I've achieved. Obviously, do a couple first and just have a look and make sure the light and the focus and everything is right, and then just do a load, just keep going and taking photos and you'll get loads of fails but you'll get some beautiful ones you know, I haven't been here too long doing this um, for the video and I, just out of about 25 shots I've got some 
some really good keepers. So it isn't too hard. Remember to look over your camera uh, if someone else is throwing the water, look over the camera, don't look through the viewfinder because the viewfinder will give you a little view and you're not going to hit it when the water's coming into view. If you just stand up, put your finger on the button, then you can time the shot much better. And it will take a few takes. But it makes it more fun. That's all the fun of it. I say you can use infrared triggers and all those type of things, but why bother? You know, have fun doing your photography. Just keep doing it until you get it right. And it's cheaper as well. Okay, so I hope that's helped a little bit. So things to think about mainly, settings on the camera, cut out the ambient light, make sure that you're going to keep everything dry and you're not going to get water by any electricity, so I'm not going to be throwing water up here or over here, I'm throwing it that way and everything's covered up and there's nothing electrical about that's going to going to be a safety issue, that's really important. Introduce some black into your surrounding area if you've got white walls or you're using a backdrop and you've got a white ceiling. That's important, you must have some black area because if you haven't you won't get that texture. So if you haven't got quite enough texture, it can be two reasons. The exposure's a little bit too high, so try altering um, the lights, turn the lights down a little bit. And also, it could be because you haven't got enough black around, so introduce some black material or whatever to, so that that water, which acts like a little lens, will pick up the black and will capture that in the shot. And that's all there is to it. Get shooting, let's see what you can do.